No one can deny that our world is in trouble. Today our cities have become battlegrounds, often ruled by gang violence. Every 42 seconds, a violent crime is committed in the United States. Every third of a minute, someone is arrested for drug abuse. Eight million American children are prescribed drugs that cause violence and suicide. Images of murderous school children and acts of senseless violence fill the headlines. None of this just happened. People aren't aware that in 1940, a prominent British psychiatrist, Colonel J.R. Rees, addressed the National Council on Mental Hygiene and set the agenda for psychiatry for the next 60 years. Since then, psychiatrists have been given authority in nearly every sector of our society with tragic results. We must aim to make it permeate every educational activity in our national life. Public life, politics and industry, should all of them be within our sphere of influence. We have made a useful attack upon a number of professions. The two easiest of them, naturally, are the teaching profession and the church. The most difficult are law and medicine. Reese's colleague, psychiatrist G. Brock Chisholm, co-founder of the World Federation for Mental Health, expanded upon psychiatry's plans. The reinterpretation and eventually eradication of the concept of right and wrong are the objectives of all psychotherapy. To achieve world government, it is necessary to remove from the minds of men their individualism, loyalty to family traditions, national patriotism, and religious dogmas. To implement their master plan, American psychiatrists promised the U.S. Congress that they could solve mankind's problems, but only if they were sufficiently bankrolled. Since then, U.S. government funding for psychiatric research alone has gone from one million to $1.4 billion a year, an increase of more than 139,000%. And with these funds, psychiatrists accelerated their strategic plan turning an unsuspecting public into psychiatric victims. They create imaginary diseases that are literally voted into existence and published in their billing Bible, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, or DSM. DSM is basically a, an arbitrary classification of thoughts, moods, and behavior decided upon by a committee of psychiatrists and its created not by anything scientific. That is, it's not as if there's some study of tissue or some study of the body or some study of matter. These invented diseases are then treated with barbaric practices and dangerous drugs that are so powerful they are classified with narcotics such as morphine, cocaine, and heroin. And even still, they are prescribed to children. The U.S. government-funded National Institutes of Health assembled a panel of prominent doctors and psychiatrists to explain to the public one of the diseases contained in the DSM, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD. I would like uh, any member of the panel to describe uh, a typical ADHD in terms of symptomatology. Mark, would you like to, since you see them in your practice. There, I mean, I think the panel has been frank in, you know, the difficulties here are immense in terms of, of uh, um, these, I mean, <clears throat> it is hard, it's very hard to know how to answer this question. There, um, they cannot, you know, even when, um, uh, they are as if driven by a motor. There are some good clinical descriptions. Um, and I think, you know, we, uh, I, I do, I think the pro part of the problem is the profession keeps changing the diagnosis. At this time, we do not have a diagnostic test for ADHD. Therefore, the validity of the disorder continues to be a problem. Psychiatrists receive $21 billion a year prescribing powerful psychotropic drugs to children for a disease that doesn't exist. 
it's all a fraud. They spend millions upon millions creating this research and creating this scientific literature to convey the impression to non-scientific medical practitioners that these are brain diseases. Psychiatrists know full well they can't prove there are any mental diseases, as they openly admitted at their annual convention in 2005. Psychiatric uh, uh, illness is, uh, is not really an uh, illness. How do you uh, evaluate if someone is cured or, or sick? Cure is certainly something we look forward to and we had no earthly idea how to accomplish. You want to treat them even if you don't really exactly know what causes it? We're not good at causes. We don't know what causes mental illness. But it hasn't stopped psychiatry from taking billions for treatments and drug prescriptions while they arrogantly peddle their cures with devastating effects on unsuspecting human guinea pigs. Mr. Blount has virtually no signs of his original illness now. The signs that uh, the movements of his mouth are completely side effects of the drugs that he was on for 20 years. Uh, Mr. Blount is quite rational. He understands what's going on. Psychiatric health care is big business. Insurance companies pay out $69 billion every year for psychiatric services doubling the cost of medical insurance premiums. Psychiatry's master plan to infiltrate all sectors of society has become a reality. While psychiatrists are paid $23 billion a year to rehabilitate American prisoners, two out of every three released convicts return to prison within three years. In the past 40 years, money doled out to psychiatrists and psychologists to improve literacy in our schools has soared to $28 billion, while through those same 40 years, functional literacy rates have plunged. Meanwhile, posing as medical doctors, psychiatrists electroshock 2 million people a year, killing 10,000. For $12 worth of electricity, American psychiatrists rake in five billion dollars a year. With all their so-called miracle treatments, nearly twice as many Americans have died in government psychiatric hospitals in just the past four decades than in all U.S. wars since 1776. So any way you measure it, psychiatry has spelled nothing but ruin. While raking in over two trillion dollars every year, they cannot point to a single cure. As unbelievable as all this may seem to you, you are about to learn the facts about psychiatry that psychiatrists would prefer you didn't know. It is because of their influence that society is failing. Something can and must be done about it.